Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm playing against uh, GM Mgur. I wonder who this is. 2500. I don't see a name. Sounds like Mikhail Golevich. Um, yeah, he might have said it, but it wasn't officially uh, stated. So, let's play Knight of Six here. The same line I played against just explained. If he goes a3, I might go castles. If he doesn't, I have some d5 related ideas later on. So, for example, if knight f3, castles, castles, I can play d5. And I have a very good position. So, now he's going for the main line. And uh, I'm playing my line. Assuming he's taking yeah, a6. And we entered this line that I, I really like. Which is kind of a novelty. Yeah. And here he has different options. Taking is what uh, Christoph played against me in the match. And now knight b5. After rook b8, the position is uh, more or less equal. But I thought for more than two minutes and I got into some time pressure. Luckily, I managed to win in that game. Uh, and this move allows d5, I believe. Which. In case he plays d4, I will have extra tempo. So yeah, this is probably the correct choice. Now, what happens if I play queen b6? He cannot go back, he has to go to a3. Oh, it's the game against Christoph all over again. I'll just go rook b8 without thinking. Try to... Oh, this one. This is an interesting choice. So... What can I do? Okay, is there anything smart that I can play with the bishop? He takes, I take. I'm gonna just be a pawn down. I'm not very convinced by my own play. So. I need to find a good move. But what could it be? I need to move. If I move this bishop, knight c6 is annoying. Maybe queen d7 and rook b5, but still, it's not very convincing. So bishop moves, takes, takes, knight back, bishop back. Not convincing at all. <sighs> Queen b6, knight c6, queen c6, it has some potential, let's try it. The knight is hanging, it has to go to a3, but nothing uh, clear for me after this. Oh, I can go here also, this one I missed, okay, this one is also true. Well, I have to try to maintain some pressure, so I'll go here, try to attack the b4 pawn, he'll probably take. Well, bishop with 2 makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I don't see how to get good counterplay for the pawn that I'm missing. This is actually helping me a little bit. Okay, at least uh, that's what I feel. So, I'll go h5, trying to get h4 and maybe hope for some counterplay. Despite being a pawn down. Yeah, but this is just far from ideal. Okay, oh, I missed bishop f4. That's too much already. Yeah. Well, this is already in good reason to resign. But I'll continue for a little bit longer. Inspiring, inspired by the last game. When my opponent just started to think for uh, hours and hours. Um, you know, it takes d5. is good. 
Yeah, I don't think he's gonna let me survive this. But I have to fight. Yeah, getting away with this position against the Grandmaster is not gonna be likely. Let's make sure what's his name. So, hey, I am Gurevich Mikhail. Lives in Brussels. Love chess and blitz. Mm -hmm. Very good player. A well known grandmaster. And uh, yeah, this is not the typical way to beat such players. Uh huh. But, uh, well. Yeah, it's far from from ideal. As I like to say sometimes, it's far from far from ideal. But uh, just play a few more moves and then see if he's precise. So the viewers can see how to exploit such positions with white when having three pawns and an exchange up. <laughs> Probably the best way to just bring all your pieces to the center. Another strategy is to just take these pawns and move them forward up the board. So this rook b6 idea fall by knight f3 is interesting, but he has queen b7 at the end. So I don't think it works. What else can I do? I mean, he wants to just go b7. So. I don't think there's much left to be done in this position. You go b7 or go g4 or something. Maybe resigning earlier is a good idea. Okay. Can't say I'm very happy about the position. Um, yeah, it's just very close to lost. There isn't even an idea that I can come up with. He wants to go rook a8. I don't have many defensive ideas. Just bringing the queen. Then I don't even have an active uh, uh, idea of defense. Like some, some targets here on the king side. I have this pawn, but this g2 square is covered. So there's not much I can do. I can just hope for him to blunder, but of course that's not the most... Uh, sportive way to play. But, uh, this is a struggle for survival. And it's not pretty. I think I'll go rook e8 for no reason. <laughs> Pretending to activate some of my remaining pieces. Yeah, now he wants to exchange queens. Unfortunately, I can't really prevent it in a convincing way. Put the knight here for the sake of uh, staying alive for a few more moves. Check. Now these two pieces are hanging. Rook a4 would save both of them. Or this one as well. Yeah. There's not much I can do. d7, rook d8. Try to bring my king over. Probably gonna lose quickly by him playing some slow moves. So, yeah. Many pieces up. Time warning. I'm quite amazed that I haven't resigned yet and I still haven't got made it. In this position that I'm pretending to have something of course he has a lot of time so there's no point to continue but again I'm having fun here having fun suffering mm -hmm.
I was hoping for some stalemate ideas, but obviously, Check. not gonna happen. Check. Check. Forfeits on time. I think I lost on time. But, uh, yeah, I fought until the end, got him to less than 10 seconds. And, uh, <laughs> well, there is a lesson in this game. Um, it obviously wasn't a pretty sight, but uh, it's very important in chess not to give up too early. And uh, as you can see, I had some chances at some point. And even if it wasn't uh, the most, uh, uh, let's call it, um, sportive way to get chances. But in Blitz, with no increment, time is part of the game. So trying to challenge my opponent to play well with the time is uh, part of the game. Now back to the opening. d5 looks correct to my eyes, but maybe I was wrong. <laughs> so here maybe I shouldn't have allowed it. Now it takes b5. Excuse me. Computer doesn't like my choice of playing d7, d5 like this, but uh, yeah, what can I say? Bishop a6 is a good move, followed by d5, saving this rook b8 move, uh, which is logical to protect the pawn, but I like the rook on the a file if possible. I'm guessing also rook b8 should equalize. Um, Rook b8, he can castle and then d5. And bishop f4, it's, I think it's one of the main moves here and it's just close to equality. And if I go bishop a6, then I go follow up with d5 and my position here is actually a little bit more convenient because in this symmetrical situation, uh, he has rook b1, I have bishop a6, but it's my move and it's very important. So the typical plan is to go e6 and get this knight over here to c4 and uh, put some pressure on his structure so let's see what happened next after he took the pawn I played rook b8 now I couldn't uh, after knight d7 I couldn't prove uh, that my position isn't really bad bishop f4 is extremely precise eh, actually I was expecting bishop d2 immediately and then he castled Played queen b3, yeah, and this is just a blunder. My opponent played the most precise moves, as you would expect from such a strong grandmaster. Yeah, and he probably, yeah, he kept playing very good moves, just progressing with his pawns. The advantage keeps growing. Yeah. There's not much I can say about it, except that he played well, and uh, that he... The only problem with what he did was that he was a bit slow, probably because he's a strong GM over the board and he's not really used to this type of internet uh, chess with uh, playing on, on, on uh, the last seconds, and uh, he was taking his time. And here it's obviously already completely winning. I was actually expecting to see rook takes b8, which is a funny move. It should be winning easily. Instead he went here. I have no chances, obviously. Just hoping to see if there was a way to try to survive a bit longer. Mm, nothing special. Yeah. Here I should have pre-moved king e7. Um, and uh, hoping to, to challenge him more on the clock, but obviously the main lesson is study your openings better than what I did in this game and obviously don't give away pawns for free and the last one probably the most important lesson in this game is to keep on fighting there's always chances maybe in this game I didn't succeed but uh, in the previous one as, you, as you've seen probably it was quite interesting uh, that in, in a resignable situation if it's even a word 
a position that anyone would probably resign and continued and uh, somehow managed to win mostly thanks to my opponent probably being a bit weird but still um, so uh, even if in one in ten situations like this you get to cha to save the game by making a draw or win it's worth the efforts and uh, chess is a struggle uh, first of all and it's a struggle between two opponents you don't have to give up uh, too early so I hope you learned some brutal truth and uh, some took the received the lesson from this game and uh, enjoyed uh, watching me suffer as opposed to suffering on, on your own and uh, if you want to learn some more then uh, keep watching the next videos